always be a learning process, and we have to become a self learner. So always using these kind of platform like Google, like anything to just find the answer, search online. <laughs> Welcome to the next episode of Pixelated Perfect. I am super excited today. I have with me Min Jun. Um, she is a product designer at Spotify currently, and she's worked with really large companies such as Microsoft and Amazon. Um, she is a lifelong learner. So basically, she wants to bring that student mindset to every team and every company that she works with. Um, she also recent, recently launched her YouTube video where she wants to share all of her expertise with the world. Um, so super, super excited to have you, Minjun. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Uh, thank you so much for having me today. I'm super excited to share my journey and the learning and uh, to, the, to our audience and uh, excited to just chat with you and answer any questions. Amazing. Yeah. I think that um, hearing a little bit more about your experience and what I've learned about you, I'm really excited. I think the audience is going to have a lot of great takeaways from you. So um, so let's let's dive in. Um, one of the first questions I really like to ask um, podcast people on the podcast is, what does design mean to you? Wow, that is a great question. So actually, my understanding of design or how does design mean to me this question changing over time so when i so before i becoming a designer i always think about design is something right makes something really pretty and beautiful um however like when i start my design journey i first using the design as a tool or as a medium to facilitate some social media, uh, facilitate some social issue discussion. So I feel like design become a broader range of uh, a tool that can have some sort of social impact. And then going into the UX and product design areas, I think design still be a tool, but it is, it's become a more like functional tool, I guess, like where we can leverage design to uh, uh, increase the workflow for this enterprise user and also solve some practical issue for our customer as well as we can use the design to bring all our team together uh, to like, improve our daily like collaboration and communication and also enhance uh, some of the strategy for the company. So I feel like design become uh, like a uh, a, a more broader uh, tool that I can not just apply into my daily workflow, but also apply to my life. So I feel like my understanding of the design is just changing over time after I get more exposure to like different like design or design areas and domain. Yeah. I, yes. Well, so that was really beautiful. And I, I like how you started with um kind of talking about how, at the beginning um, mm -hmm. of your career, maybe just how people think of design before getting into design, it's like beautiful, right? And yeah. it is beautiful. And that yeah. is a big goal. Like design is everywhere around us, right? We notice design or we notice when there's bad design, I guess we can say it like that. Um, and how that also was like a social impact. And then how getting into UX and design, it was really like functional, which is is so true. It's like, and I also liked how you said how it brings teams together and it's like collaborative. And so I feel like you touched on a lot of really important themes that make up design that people outside of design don't realize are also design. Um, okay, so I want to ask you um, like maybe some like personal questions, like what inspired you to become a designer? What was it that triggered you to maybe not just become a designer, but move to product design? So uh, so when I was a child, I always loved uh, drawing, like drawing anything on the paper and, uh, and filled, it, filled it with different color because I enjoying this kind of creation like, process. I feel like I was the only person like, flying on the clouds and there's no one else that can uh, disturb my creative flow. So I really enjoying this kind of process of uh, create something and visualize my idea into uh, some stuff on the paper. 
Um, but I think one thing really have a impact on myself to becoming the UX and product designer was when I was in my high school, I got my first Apple product, which is the Apple uh Apple Touch. So the yeah. one very similar to the iPhone, because iPhone was very expensive and luxury uh going back to that time in China. So not a lot of people they can afford iPhone at that time. But I'm luckily to like get a I, Apple Touch, which is a cheaper version. You can call through the Apple Touch, but the overall design and packaging is exactly the same as uh the iPhone. So I was super impressed by their like interface design. I, I remember there's a white Apple just coming out when you first opening up the Apple Touch. So I think that kind of animation was something unforgettable for me. So I was wondering about like how I could designing the product like the Apple Touch or like how could how could this designer draw this kind of 3D app icon on the Apple Touch and everything like every uh internal like app from Apple uh it was nicely designed at that time. Just every detail was just way more bad way more better than other pro- other existing product on the market. Um so I was just like maybe I can become a designer designing this type of product but I actually didn't know how to start. Um and I think within that year or a year or two years later, one of my friends, she studied abroad in the state and coming back to China during the summertime. So she told me that Mingjun, there was a there there's a major called human computer intelligence design, which is actually the UX design uh, and product design. So a lot of international students who study on that program successfully. Uh, land their job in this larger company like Google, Microsoft, like Apple. So I feel like maybe that is the career path uh, I need to uh, pursue. So within that kind of goal in mind, I think I try a lot of things. Like I learn, I start my soul learn journey in graphic design by learning this kind of Adobe uh, tool like Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator. Uh, and then like starting apply to these master programs in the state focusing on the like, UX and product design, which is which was the HCI programs I hear when I was at high school. And I successfully like got the offer from University of Washington, Seattle, uh, the human computer intelligence design program. So I so I built up my foundation knowledge in UX and the product design at UW. So after graduation from the school, I start my like full-time job as a product designer uh since like 2018. So yeah, so I just keep working um until now. Yeah. yeah. So I think that is my journey into product design. But there's a lot of like obstacle and the challenge uh throughout the entire journey. But I don't know. I feel like I always have a mindset about I can become a designer so I just keep going until now (laughs) yeah I okay (laughs) there are a couple things I want to go back to because I think it was it was super interesting I love that you um talk about that experience you had with the apple iTouch was it iTouch or just apple touch Apple Touch, I think. Okay. Yeah, Apple Touch. That's really interesting. And it's it's like, I think it goes back to the question of like, what is design? And design is everywhere, right? So like, not only was it the experience you had, um, like with the physical product, but it was like unveiling it and how it all feels so cohesive. And while you were saying that, I was thinking back to like, I wonder if I had that like aha moment of like, oh, design is my future. And I can't think of something specific, but I really loved how that was like such an ingrained moment for you. That's mm-hmm. really powerful. And I always feel like that moment when I first opening up my Apple Touch was always like a lie in my mind. Yeah. yeah. But but actually after that, I got a lot of new Apple products, like iPhone and MacBook Pro. I never have that kind of moment again even I was still very impressed by Apple design but I feel like the first Apple touch really have some 
like tremendous influence on my career. Yeah, yeah I, I think that's amazing. And then I like how you kind of said your friend came back and was like, oh, like you can actually do this. Like this is a thing. And I think all mm-hmm. of us designers, um, I'm sure everyone listening has had like that moment of like, oh, I'm creative. Like I like a- Apple products. Like what can I do with this? How can I make this a living? And like recognizing and finding like UI, UX design, product design, whatever you want to call it, or graphic design. It's like, oh, I can make a living doing this is really powerful, especially from creative people who are like told like, oh, you can't be an artist. You're not going to ever make money or anything like that. And it's like, this is a career Mm. that you can be passionate about, be creative about, and also sustain yourself, (laughs) which is important. (laughs) Super interesting. Um, and then, okay, so I have some questions. You talk, we kind of talked about, I, I want to get into the master's program because I think that's really interesting and I want to hear some of that. I have some questions about that. But you mentioned like um, that this was like your, how you became a product designer and you're like, there were some challenges along the way, right? Which we all experienced. Is there a challenge in particular that like sticks out to you that was something that was really hard when you were kind of getting started in product design? Yeah, I think there are def- definitely a few. One is applying for the SCI school um, is very challenge for international students because we have to go through a lot of like English exam and get, and also get some certain like uh, score in order to apply for the school because they have very strict uh, standard on okay. for international students uh, who uh, like English is not our la- mother or native language. And the second, I think because of this uh, English barriers or the difference in the language also bring a lot of challenge into the process of studying abroad in a CI school in UX design program, as well as looking for the job uh, in the state uh, because you didn't know what is going to happen during this process. What's it, what was the interview process look like? As well as I, as a, I never present to people or talk to people for more than like 30 minutes before I, in English, before I start looking for the job. So how could I present my portfolio in front of group of her manager and designer like within such an intense hour long setting. I feel yeah. like this all kind of challenge coming from the language barriers um, is very, it's very hard. Yeah. And the second one is about the information gap um, because you didn't know about everything. Like you didn't know about like what is the UX program in the state, like which kind of, which school I need to uh, go for. And there's not a lot of international student there I I can reach out at that time for uh for help or for some advice uh and the second one is if I search for like Google or uh Google there's also less information about like like the program except programs in the states going back to like 2016 and 2017 um so I think and you have to like just find as much as information you can and using use using your personal like gut feeling to guess that this might be the right program for me so I feel like sometimes I was very stressed out by making this kind of decision because I feel like that was an important decision for me to make such move um uh, in the study abroad so I was very anxious about like how to make such decisions at that time. Um, and the other challenge is also coming from um, living alone in the foreign country and everything is very new to me. Like you have to opening up the SSN first uh, and going to the bank to opening up your first like, student chasing uh, a student account to so everything like, not just about the study, but also the life is itself is very challenging. Even I didn't know about like what is a grocery store like in the state. Like there's a Trader Joe, there's a Whole Foods. Everything is right. just so new to me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. I have so many other questions about this. I think this is great for listeners that um 
are maybe not from the U.S. and looking to come to the U.S. Um, so I have specific questions about this program and getting into the program, but also, yeah, I love how you talked about some of those differences, like culturally, like that's extremely hard. Like you're coming over here, like how, okay, well, actually, let me start from the beginning. So the, the, um, the applying to school, um, the English exam, like what tips or tricks do you have for people that have to figure out how to pass this exam and learn English and get up to speed quickly? I think especially for international students, speaking is one thing I feel pretty challenged because we do have some English exam in China, but mainly focusing on reading and writing. So mm -hmm. if I go to like the GIE or TOEFL exam, I feel like especially the the speaking part was very challenging because you have to speak in front of the computer and they will record your answers within like a minute long. So they ask a couple questions and you give you one hour, uh, give you one minute to answer every questions, which I feel very challenging because the question they ask is something I never encountered before. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Um, okay. So I think that's really good advice because I think that, um, well, so personally, I'm trying to learn Italian because my husband's Italian. So I can somewhat relate to you, but I've never been put in that position. And I feel like one thing I was doing and I like do Duolingo and all those apps is like, it is, it's like writing and reading, but speaking and like being able to understand is a huge thing that I think a lot of people don't think about when trying to learn a language. So I think that's like amazing advice is like speak or like take a course or talk to people, find somewhere that you can actually have a conversation because that's going to really elevate <laughs> yeah, how you're, exactly. you can speak a different language. Yeah. That's really great advice. And especially if you're going to study or looking for a job in uh, the state or in a foreign country, you have to speak to these people. Yeah. Right. It's like speaking is obviously the number one thing, not reading and writing. Like okay, sure, that's important. But in your day to day, you need to yeah. be able to go to a cafe and order a coffee, right? Or something yeah. like that. Those are like, way more important than like being able to write, I want a coffee. <laughs> so. yeah. And and the other thing about this kind of English exam is they're, they're the slow for booking the exams are always fully books. So you oh. have to book all these kind of exams like a couple months earlier. But I'm not sure about how these kind of availability works right now but going back to my time it was very hard to book the slow so make sure that you plan it in advance because if you have the if you get the result but you don't you are not satisfied with uh this exam uh, you can just take another one so sometimes just book twice like in like two months so to make sure that i can get the results i expected okay i mean yeah book Book it extra just in case you need to do it again. That's really good advice. Um, okay, so I have a question about you choosing um which program to take. So what was that process like? I know you talked a lot about like at the end it was like a gut decision, or you talked about how you could make those decisions, but I'm sure that was really that was a lot. Like you're going to a foreign country, you're going to a master's program, like how yeah. were you able to make those decisions and figure out what schools had the programs you were looking for? Yeah, so I actually got two master degree in the state. The first one is is not UX design, it's learning science and te technology from from UPenn. So, but I I, I leverage that opportunity to take a lot of fine arts and traditional like graphic design class at UPenn because we didn't have UX design. Uh, at the European Ask Art School, so so I know about myself. Like if I go into my second master degree, I want to go in for something really UX design focus. Uh, so because my purpose is more around like how I can get a job or land my job after getting my second master degree in UX design. So yeah. I have a very specific purpose uh, in my mind. Uh, so I applied for a few like SCI school. Like, however, like one of my dream school was uh, is actually Carnegie Mellon University, but I got the rejection from all of their SCI programs. Um, so which was very upset at that time, like yeah. <laughs> because you can you you all you get a few rejection for CMU for different like SCI related program you have yeah. applied for. Uh, and and then I got the rest of the offer, which including like UW SCI programs, uh, which is I think at that time is my 
second top choice among with other options. And I also get some offer from like Indiana University, uh, UMich, uh, as well as some very artistic school like Parsons School of Design uh, and Rhode Island School of Design. But because I want to study very UX design, product design focus, master program, so I'm not leaning towards to go to this art school because I was afraid of taking the same class as I did at UPenn and just and building up a portfolio that is too artistic for job hunting purpose. Yeah. Um, and also like, I also think about the locations uh, and the overall alumni resource at that time um, because before the pandemic, every company is not remote, so we have to go to the on-site. And because UW have their unique location, which is in Seattle, there are so many companies like Microsoft, Amazon uh, are there. And looking there, looking at UW alumni uh, profile, you can see a lot of designer graduate from that program land a job in this bigger company. So I feel like among with all these choice, UW uh, SCF program is definitely the one I, I have to go. And I also also love to, and I never went to the West Coast before I joined, uh, C- I, before I moved to Seattle. So I always want to live in the West Coast as well. That's fascinating. So you, you had a plan, like you knew what you wanted. <laughs> and you I were know. making, yeah, and you made sure that like this decision of which school to go to was really aligned with your goal. Um, which is amazing. And I love that you like had this whole process and thought it out and you're like, okay, if I go here, then I, I know that these jobs that I want to get are in the the city and it's just going to be easier and that they have an alumni and like you Mm -hmm. did your research. So I I think that's really great feedback for people is like, Hey, make sure you find a program that aligns with like where you see yourself going. And like you mentioned, like, Oh, art school, it could be fun, but is it going to help me be hireable? And to you, the answer is no, that's not going to be the best decision. So I think that's really great advice for people looking to make that to to decide. And I I have another question for you is like going to school and you being, um, you not being a U.S. citizen. So does that mean that like when you graduate, is there a certain amount of time that you have to find a job? Exactly. So we have like two months uh, the time to land a job and also during the job we also have some certain type of unemployment so if you get laid off from this job you have to find a job as soon as possible to keep you like work visa and there's another reason I choose like UW as a program then the then this kind of design program at the art school because usually like for the art school they only offer student within with a one year's OPT. So OPT is the time for the international student to legally work in the state and find and using that time to finding their job. Um, however, if you graduate from the STEM program, which is the program I attend at UW, they have three years OPT. So okay. I was thinking that even I, I I don't want to stay here for a longer time, but three years was kind of the enough time for me to hone my skill and get more professional opportunity uh, in ah. the state. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that's a huge factor. That's That makes a lot of sense. Um, I have a question for you about you're 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 setting up your plan in your future and you want to work for larger companies where did that stem from what was like that thought process that got you to like oh I want to work for the apples the amazons the microsofts of the world I think there's a couple things is um in in terms of like the design culture I think larger companies definitely have more resource like usually like if you join a team as an intern or junior designer we always pair with a senior designer who could be the mentor to guide you through the process. And you also have the design manager. I think design manager is very critical uh, on our uh, career growth because they can find opportunity and help you grow your opportunity areas uh, in, in your job. Uh, so I think like if you are looking, if you are working at larger company, you definitely have this kind of resource to grow your career, which especially for this kind of mentorship is very crucial for intern and junior designer to become more like uh, s- s- more seniors in their career path. Uh, and the second one is about the, the, the projects. 
um, and the impact. Usually, like if you are working in this larger company, uh, no matter how big or smaller the project you are working on, the impact will be huge. So even you just working on like a, a couple screens or just designing a small, simple workflow, it will have a very important impact on uh, like millions or billions of users. So I feel like as a designer, I always empowered by the impacts of the works I'm, I will be working on. And the other thing is around um, like, for example, if you want to just stay in the company, stay in this company, but you don't want to looking for a new job, but you kind of tired of your current team. So it's easier for, for us to like, find a job internally and transfer to other team without going to the full cycle of the job hunting process. Um, and the last thing is around for international students, I think usually like we are looking for the company who can sponsor our visa. So usually large company have this kind of resource uh, and like the money to sponsor this international student to work. So it's more like the job, the visa will be not a huge issue for them to sponsor and feel like my job will become more stable. But yeah. Yeah. Those are great points. Yeah. And I, I think that's, would you say like a lot of um, other international designers that you know, are those like similar thoughts that they have too? Is like, oh, I want to work in big companies, the stability, but also the mentorship and overall, like, yeah, the stability is that, is that kind of like a Yeah. And common... especially, feel, I feel like at least for like the Chinese uh, family we like our parents always expect us to go to like the best school and get a and working in this kind of famous company so if I talk to my mom that I got a job in one of these bigger company they they definitely know about like what this company it is and yeah. they feel so proud of um uh, like what I have been doing but but my my parents they don't have any like limitation on like what company I'm going to do, but I think in terms of my current like career, going to, uh, working and growing my career in this larger company is a uh, like suitable like way for me, um because everyone have their different expectation uh right. for their career, um and the other thing is around like it's more about like if you are working on this larger company in your early career, um, you have this kind of bigger name on your resume, it's easier right. for you to maybe in the future, you want to stay away and finding a job in a smaller company. All these kind of recruiters are going to find you because you have been working at this larger company. Yeah, so I think in early on, I want to learn and grow in more like a mature design environment and the culture going to the big company is definitely the the top option for me. Totally. I think that's super relevant. I think all of those are great points. I think it's like a cultural thing um, for a lot of international students. Right. Um, and then also, yeah, like that name is going to, is going to take you far. Like no matter what you do in the future, having these big names is, is going to be important to get you to wherever you want to go. So yes, a thousand percent agree. Um, okay. So I have some questions about like the personal experience you had, you're like living alone is really hard. You were in a completely new place, like how to open a bank account, all these things. It's like, Oh my gosh, how do I do those things? So what advice would you have for uh, maybe an international student that is coming here for the first time? Like maybe what were some like really important things that you wish someone would have told you when you yeah, came? That's a great question. I think the first thing is uh, right now we have so many networking resources like LinkedIn. So if you get the offer from this school, make sure that you leverage the LinkedIn and reach out to the alumni or the current student there and talk about like, hey, I'm Minjun and I got the offer from this school. I'm not curious about your advice on blah, blah, blah. And oh, and I think they always willing to at least like, talk to you, like have a coffee chat with you virtually. Um, I think that is my top tip. I think talking to this like real person to get the information is more than helpful than any 
like platform or just search on Google alone. And the second thing is around, oh, there's another, the second thing is around, there's so many YouTubers start there, like, Studying their like blog or studying abroad or studying in the like in Seattle or studying in the state. So I feel like I love watching like how people like just doing in their study life or their work life through their blog. So if you're curious about like what is the real life in this country, maybe you can just search on YouTube and just watch these YouTubers going on. Uh, and the the third one is, uh, I think leveraging the resource from the school itself. For example, there always be like uh it's kind of the 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 the, the staff from that certain programs, she or her is always help willing to answer any question. So you can just using the email to send out a few questions, uh, ask for some advice. And even if you are very scary of at working with a Numina, maybe you can ask these like, school staff to for help. Like, could you recommend someone from the cinema background, with the cinema background, like, uh, to chat with me for uh, some advice for studying abroad or studying in this school? I think they're always willing to help. And lastly is, uh, like I mentioned earlier, like, it's always become, it's always be a learning process. And we have to become a self learner. So always using this kind of platform like Google, like anything to just find the answer, search online. Like I think that is my also my approach right now. Every time if I have question, like I first just open up Google and search for some information, just browse the information quickly. And I feel like, okay, there's nothing there that's super helpful for me. I might think about who is the right person I can reach out to for the next step. Um, I think just always just using yourself like, and just go for it and search for the information uh, on your own first. Yeah. And last last thing is, it's more about the mental mindset is um, because you already make a decision on like, studying abroad, which is a huge step uh, in your life. So think about like, the reason why you want to just go here and live away from your family. Think about the original goal or reason for you to come here and take this kind of courage uh, throughout the entire process, no matter what kind of obstacle you are going to face. Yes. <laughs> Um, I think that's amazing advice for anyone that's coming over here. I mean, especially that last thing you said is like, I think it could feel really overwhelming when you're doing something new, but it's like, don't forget the reason why you're doing it. Don't let these opportunities pass you by, like make the most of your time. Even, I mean, it's way easier said than done. Right. But yeah. I think that's a good like thing to remind yourself of maybe when you're going through a difficult time or you're feeling lonely um, in a new place, everything like that. Um, you also kind of touched on, it was something that I kind of, brought up when I introduced you was this like lifelong learning approach that you have. Um, and like, I, I guess my question to you is, I think we talked about how you approach that personally, like when you're in a new country, but in work, in your career, how do you approach that lifelong learning um, mm -hmm. piece about you? Yeah, there's a couple of things. First, like in terms of uh, working as a product designer, we always have some sort of opportunity areas to grow. So identify your opportunity areas and weakness and looking for the opportunity or learning resource to help you grow that uh, opportunity areas. This is very like crucial part for career growth, especially like if you want to become more senior designer, you have to be like comfortable with everything like, like such as visual design, intelligent design, like communication and collaboration, you have to be good at all these kind of thing and become very great at one or two things. So you have to just keep learning and you know, like technology is always changing over time. So you have to just keep learning and try new tool and learning new tool. And the second thing is in terms of like working on the project, working on a new project, uh, and designing for the user you haven't designing for. For example, I have been working on a few like enterprise tool and the user I'm designing for is very specific for 
a certain industries. So I have to bring this kind of uh student or a uh, uh, begin a uh, beginner mindset to dig into their uh their workflow, understanding like what is their their daily job look like, daily workflow look like, and what kind of tool they are using in their daily job, and is there any opportunity or friction point doing this doing their workflow? I can use the design to optimize. So there's also a lot of question I also need to ask uh, to my stakeholder, to my user, in order to really understand like what is going on, what is their pain point, uh, so I can think about and explore different design solution for it. So before I dig into any actual design work, I have a lot of question and I have to do a lot of research on like, the user itself and the product domain itself as well. And the third one is about like, after you working on the in the industry for a couple of years, you realize that the design is not just design and pushing pixel. Uh, as a designer, like if, especially I want to become more senior designer, I need to think about like like what kind of areas I need to uh grows in order to become more seniors. So there's obviously something I can still learn in, such as product strategy, like business strategy, or some of the designers they might be interested in some technical stuff. I feel like no matter what kind of areas beyond the design, you find your passion. Just go for it and finding this kind of resource. Or there is another easy way is just grab your coworker who are the product manager or engineer and ask them advice for how to get started to learn more about like product strategy, uh, this kind of thing. So I feel like just always like just learning and uh, looking for the opportunity and the leverage different external and internal resource to help you grow in a career. I think those are all really great tips. I feel like there's like I think that being a product designer, it's like we naturally have to be curious and we naturally have to know that there's so many unknowns, right? Like it's like being, I don't think anyone's like an expert or like I say, I've said this many times on the podcast. So sorry for everyone that's heard this before, but like the more I grow in my career and the further I get along in the design space, leadership space, the less I know, the more questions I have, the more I feel like I know nothing. And I think that's a really powerful mindset. And I love that you're kind of, you bring that into everything you do, whether it's like design or personal, you're like, Hey, think of it as a beginner. What can I do? What can I leverage? What resources do I have right now that I can use to get better? And I think that's, that's great advice for especially junior designers out there. It's like, embrace the unknown, embrace that and like use it and use your resources and grow. Don't like feel stuck or feel like you don't have what it takes or you feel like you don't have that mentor, that resource, like find that person, ask those questions, like continue, always, always do that. And so I think that's amazing advice that you have. And I, yeah, like I'm excited for you to continue this journey of growing your designs by like having that, that yeah, learning, always wanting to learn. So that that was wonderful. Um, I I want to kind of um, a couple more questions for you. One of the biggest questions I have is you mentioned um, when you're we talking about how to um, get go into a new culture without knowing anything. You mentioned YouTube, right? So YouTube is a great way to see how other people live to gain that knowledge. But you also started a YouTube channel. So I want to hear more about like the reasons why your motivations why like why are you tackling this new challenge and what what has it given back to you so far? Okay, that's just a great question. I'm very passionate about to share. I think I really want to uh, become a YouTuber uh, that share something around my learning through my design journeys. But I always like find some, I, I always say like, okay, right now I don't have time. I need to focus on this thing. And right now I'm going to move into a new country or new city. I don't have time and I don't, I feel so busy with my life and the works. So I always like just find something else and didn't want to start because I was actually afraid of starting the YouTube because uh, looking at the camera and talking to 
like the camera and just posting your content online was such a scary thing. But after like, I think a year or two years practice about just going to these kind of conference and meet up, also like talking to the podcast platform, I feel like I become more confident at least like share something, share my piece of learning to like different folks. So I feel like I have these kind of uh, at least like mental minds mental mindset to get started into the YouTube field and starting start my own channel. Uh, and the the second thing is the second thing is around like uh I think that even we already have a lot of U, UX or product design YouTube YouTuber there, but there still be a lot of contents like they they, they haven't covered and I want to cover more. Especially um I think after I'm thinking around like after I growing my audience into the certain level, I want to do something around very likely about the fundamental of the design, UX design education part. Like how can we leverage the basics graphic design uh foundation into the UX design and how could we just just learn you just create a platform or channel for people who not just want to become a UX designer, but I also want to learn UX design. So I want to design in this kind of uh content that is easy to easy to understand and digest and apply to their daily work. Because when I was in school, I feel like even I go to very UX design focused uh school, but I still find some gap between the school and the industries, especially in the school, you have to read a lot of academic paper, which it which is not really applied to what you are going to work in the school. So I'm trying to find like close this kind of information gap um to starting this kind of YouTube channel. But because I just started and more people they are interested in like the job hunting, like product design interview piece. So in my like first couple video i might be focusing on this kind of portfolio portfolio presentation portfolio resume like equity all things around the product design interview but after i growing up my channel a little bit more i want to just expand my content a little bit uh, on something i really passionate about is the design education pieces yeah and again like i i know about you from this podcast is you have a plan <laughs> you yeah. know where you want to go which is amazing <laughs> Um, and yeah, I think that's super interesting. And I, one of my questions I had, which you kind of answered was like, how are you going to differentiate yourself from all the other design, um, YouTube mm -hmm. channels out there? Right. And I think like, I think what I, I guess the question I have for you that you kind of mentioned was, um, in school and like a formal education, there's like specific things you learn, like reading, mm -hmm. like formal papers. That's not that actionable and it's not that user friendly mm -hmm. or it's not usable in your career. Right. And I think a lot of people that are like taking boot camps, coming out of boot camps, like they have this knowledge of what they're supposed to do. They know all the steps, but they don't have that real world experience. And so I think that's really interesting that it's like, how can you teach people in a way that is actually, they can apply it yeah. to like the real world. Right. Yeah, Which exactly. Education yeah. misses yeah. sometimes. And, and the other thing is so wrong. Like I mentioned, I love learning. And if I have this kind of channel, it's kind of become a motivation for me to like research on some certain topic and dig into these uh, materials and looking for the way I can explain it in a easy and a digestible content. And also through this process, I also need to learn and become better on like vid uh like how to talk to cameras and how to edit my video. All these things is around that like, learning a certain like skill set and growing your certain skill set. So I pretty enjoying this kind of learning some things and uh uh just distill the information and make it uh digestible for a broader audience. Yeah and in line with learning how to like look at the camera and where to look, are you also editing your videos? Yeah, that's yeah. a lot. That's I also need to create my own like branding to for my videos. I I'm yeah. also working on some this whole like illustration and the branding element for my video. So which is a lot. It's kind of you become one person become a team 
to create like from the content, the video editing, branding, all these things and marketing for your yeah. channel. So which is a very, very unique challenge and the new opportunity for me. Yeah, no, totally. And I I think like you going on podcasts and talking about your YouTube channel, like obviously we will um, link to your YouTube channel, but <laughs> it sounds like you already, you know what you're doing. You have a whole process of how you're going to market, get get the word out, get, get subscribers. So I think that's great. Um, I guess kind of ending this podcast and maybe the last question I have for you is like, where do you see yourself in the next like year or five years? Like, where do you want to go in your your career and or personal, like with the YouTube channel? What are your expectations? Uh, I think uh, I still want to stay in my uh, IC career path and become a more like senior designer. And there's also a couple of things I need to work on as a designer, like how to better facilitate the workshop. Uh, how to be better at uh, communicating with different stakeholders. Uh, so all these kind of soft skills is something I definitely need to work on and grow. Uh, and also I want to learn more about and become better at strategy and learn using this kind of resource to learn the business and product strategy pieces. Um, so I think that is something I, 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 I see myself in the next couple of years as a designer uh, and as a content creator, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I want to put more energy and efforts on my own YouTube channel and creating uh, this kind of content around product design, product design educations. Uh, and I think during this process, I definitely want to just spend some time on just learning some of the foundation of UX design, graphic design, information, in, information visualization again so on my own and trying to looking for a way made it uh, practical and digestible for our like audience. Um, I think that is pretty much my, my, my plan. And also like just have a healthy lifestyle, like, like always looking for, always finding the time to just work out a little bit throughout the weekday and weekend um, and just enjoying the life with my friends and family. I love that you added that on the end because I think it's like we we're talking about career and like obviously you're super motivated and you have all of these goals, but you also need to think about yourself and your health and your happiness and finding that balance um, is, is important too. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited to follow along on your YouTube journey. I feel like you kind of talked about this at the beginning of when you talked about your YouTube journey was like getting started was the hardest part. Like you had been wanting yeah. to do this for a while and finally like here. So I feel like you've gotten over that hurdle and you're, you've started it and I'm looking forward to kind of watching how, how it progresses. Um, so thank you so, so much for being on the podcast, talking about your experience um, in working in large companies, your experience um, getting a, a job as an international or as an international student coming here for school and getting a job here. So thank you so much for taking that time. Um, and I'm excited to follow along with you in the future. Thank you so much. I really enjoying our conversation. And I also get a lot of inspiration for maybe my future YouTube video as well. Yes, I hope so. I have like, I feel like you can take some of this really interesting content for sure. For sure. No, that's great. Um, awesome. Well, we will we will continue to follow you and we will be in touch in the future to catch up.